we are going to cover some of the questions related to ERC credit claim and also PVP2. Uh, it is designed to answer the questions that we have seen so far. And now, let's talk about employee retention credit. Hey, if you tell me that you're so confused about it, I'll tell you that even professionals are confused about it, okay? So you are not alone, you're normal, and at least you're normal. Being normal is a huge plus. How many people are going crazy over the pandemic? So we're still the normal ones. Now, question number one. Remember this whole session is about answering questions. These are the questions we get at least once a day, if it is not a couple of times a day. That's why we bought it here, because we want to just address the questions so we can all be good, right? And in brief, can you describe employee retention credit, the purpose, the basic parameters? Okay, so let me just say this to you. The ERC has an ERC 2020, and there's also ERC 2021. They are not the same. And for ERC 2020, and if you want me to describe it really, really simple, it is a employer refundable tax credit to refund up to 5,000 per employee, okay? Just leave it that way. This is how we describe it, okay? Did you hear me saying that? It is 5,000 per year per employee maximum tax credit, refundable, means you literally get the cash back with your 941. So it is related to 941 and it is related to the whole year 941 like there are four quarters, right? But maximum is 5,000 per employee. So if your employee and for that quarter, you qualifies to, to receive credit, but that employee didn't reach to the 500, 5,000, then you don't claim 5,000, that's a maximum, okay? And it's, by, it's, it's every quarter you need to qualify. If you don't qualify and you cannot claim, okay, we'll talk about qualification. So 2021, ERC is 7,000 per quarter per employee refundable tax credit. I repeat, 2021 is refundable tax credit per quarter per employee maximum at 7,000. You hear me right, it's different. And the, the, the 2020 is 5,000 for the whole year. And the 2021, they only authorize two quarters. So maximum is a 14,000. Because each quarter is 7,000, maximum is 14,000 if you qualify. So now let's go to what I prepared for you. So the employee retention credit is fully refundable tax credit. We talked about that, right? And 50% of qualified wages paid to employee that is 2020, okay? And then this qualified wages paid, so the period of ERC existed is from March 12, 2020, all the way to June 30th or July 1st of 2021. So this whole time ERC is available to you. The maximum, the maximum, that 10,000 you see on the slide, that's for 2020. So right now it is 14,000 for 2021. So in the bottom, I have this example, 10,000 it is for 2020, 14,000 is for 2021. So qualified wages, and just, just remember that qualified wages is gross wages plus the employer portion of health insurance payment. If you don't do that, if you don't do the employer paid health insurance, then it's very simple. It's your gross wages and the salary for that quarter. You hear me, for that quarter, right? Okay, so now let's go forward and to get more things to clarify. So we listed two acts here. One is CARES Act, the other one is CAA. And the CARES Act is what was before December 27th, 2020, 
before the, the bill got signed into the law by President Trump at the time, okay? And the CARES Act made it really clear. It says that qualified wages up to 10K per employee and the maximum credit is 5K, maximum credit for the year, for the year, okay? So if you have, let's say in 2020, you shut down for five days and then, then your, your gross sales was 50% down from 2019. So you qualify for a quarter and these two period as together cannot go over 5,000 per employee. So that's 2020. And then CAA come around, uh, changed some of the things. So the biggest change though, folks, is the two quarters and they are 7,000 per quarter, not that whole year, not 2020, 2021 year, okay? Then of course they capped at 7K instead of 5K, that's a change. So then you just really kind of, I want you to just hear me saying that the difference. And I think you got it already, right? So the maximum is 5,000 in 2020, but the maximum for 2021 is what? Is 14,000. All right. So that is in a very brief way to say what's, what's the difference, right? What, what is it? Which employers are eligible to claim the ERC? Okay. Before before the December 27th signing, and if you have a PPP, you cannot claim ERC. And if you don't have a PPP or you failed to get, uh, failed to apply, and you can get ERC, that's what before, but now it got changed. It says that you can claim ERC even though you have PPP. But the only thing is important to remember is in 2020, you used a portion of payroll uh, you used PPP dollars to pay some of the payroll, right? So those payroll cannot be calculated into ERC. So you need to clearly know which 24 weeks you used PPP dollars. That doesn't qualify you to get ERC even if your sales drop, even if you are you, you got shut down and it just doesn't qualify because you got the PP to pay for that wages, okay? Now, and if you have, so obviously here it says that the, the new CAA Act says, qualified wages is an employer with 500 or fewer employee will be eligible even if the employee, uh, even if the employer is working. So they're saying that you know, what doesn't matter as long as you have less than 500 employees and whether they work or not work and we don't care and you can claim the credit, okay? The reason work and not work even brought up here because in the CARES Act, it says that if you are an employer with more than 100 people, they have to be, you can claim ERC, but these people has to be the one not, not working. But if you have less than 100, whether they work or not, it doesn't matter, you can claim the credit. So that's why it came up in, in this way for you right now. The full or partial suspension of business during any calendar quarter because of the governmental order due to COVID-19 or significant decline on the sales. So now it says that full or partial suspension of the business during any calendar quarter. So if the suspension came in right now, and I know in California, suspension came in the end of December and went all the way to 20th of January. So you actually have your first quarter, you already qualify because you got suspension there, okay? So you qualify means what? Means you can claim maximum $7,000 per employee to be paid out of your full, to be out of your 941 taxes you paid and that you got refundable credit. Okay, refundable credit just means that the tax credit is not, um, it, it, even if you don't have enough taxes paid in, you still get a refund. So that's a refundable credit. A significant decline in gross receipts, 20%. So in 2020 require you to have a declining of 50%. So if 2019 second quarter, you made $100,000 sales 
and your gross sales in 2020 to qualify for ERC need to be 50,000 sales. You can't be making more. And you continue to qualify until you raise to 80%. But here, the new CAA bill said that, scratch that, and don't worry about it. It's 20% of declining. So now you know it's 20%. That applies to 2020 as well. So partial or full, full suspension plus 20% of gross sale reduction. And you probably, you're probably thinking about, oh, Ying, what is this 25%? That is PPP, folks, okay? Don't let the government confuse us. Come on, let's just be really clear with our head. It's 20% for ERC and 25% for PPP. Well, and, uh, and the, the, the latest bill, the CAA, is called Consolidated Appropriation Bill, that one, and says that if, even if you got PPP loan, you can still apply, but just make sure you are not getting the credit on the salary that is paid by PPP dollars, okay? All right, question number three. How do you determine qualified wages? Relatively simple, okay, relatively simple. The qualified wages are the people, and remember we talked about the CARES Act was saying that they have, if you have more than 100 people um, working in the company, then you only, the qualified wages only accounted those who didn't work. But if you have a lower, less than 100, then it counted you, uh, counted 100% um, for whoever works or not working. But this CAA bill, this update says that a employer with 500 or fewer employees will be eligible for credit, even if employees are working. So simple. That's like Chinglish, right? It's simpler than English. It's just, that's a real English. I mean, English is supposed to be simple. And eligible employers may claim ERC retroactively by filing amended quarterly employment tax return 941X for affected calendar quarter of 2020. Come on guys and look at your 2020 and see whether you can go back to claim. And the employer may also catch up on previous unclaimed ERC by claiming ERC on the fourth quarter. So if you haven't really filed your fourth quarter, do it, do it. Otherwise you can always file amendment. You know, personally, if you ask me, and I say you file amendment because that is a separate filing. So it's so much easy to organize and don't mix it with the fourth quarter. Just file your fourth quarter normal, then come back to amend 2020, whichever quarter you want to amend. And when you do that, and especially if you work your business, if you work your payroll with those large payroll chain, and they are so difficult to do those things for you, and it is much easier bring your payroll report, come to community CPA and we can do the amendment because as long as you have the original report. So it is easier to subcontract that out to a third party when you do amendment on ERC and don't try to fix your fourth quarter, then it will get everything screwed up so badly, right? This thing, you know, I always say that if we were going to make some changes to our tax return, I always say that make it clean as much as you can isolate what you are doing. So make you all four quarters in 2020, file them correctly normally. Then you come to amendment, you can implement the amendment you want to do, right? So that's a best practice. And ERC question number four, when is an employer considered to have a significant decline in gross receipts and how is it calculated? And it's such a great question because you have to have, so in order to have a ERC working for you, two conditions, uh, one of the conditions has to exist, otherwise you don't qualify. So number one condition is that if in that quarter you have received the government shutdown, so even partially or fully, it doesn't matter a one or, you know, can be partially, can be fully, so that quarter qualifies. Got it, right? And that's one. Or, or there's no shutdown. There's no shutdown. But your gross receipts were 20% less than 
the same quarter in 2019. So 2019, you made $100,000 gross sales. And in 2020, in 2020, second quarter, it was only 80. So you qualify for that. So making sure, I say it again, making sure if PPP paid for that payroll already, you do not want to count that. And let's say if your second quarter did got reduced, but your PPP also paid all the second quarter wages, then you don't have anything to claim because you don't have wage cost. It is paid by PPP, okay? So make sure you know that. And I cannot emphasize enough because the person who does your ERC credit may not know which quarter or which pay period was paid by PPP. So you also need to give that information to the, to the people who does the amendment for you, right? All right, so now with this one, and uh, this is the, um, um, yeah, this is related to what I was talking about right now. I'm going to share with you another screen, which this is the one that I want you to see how I do the calculation and in real number format and to see the difference between 2020 and 2021. I'm telling you that the ERC is not the same animal between the 2020 and 2021. Don't think they are similar. They're totally, one is a cat, the other one is a tiger. So they're different. Let me bring you to um, my Excel and that I prepared for you today. Um, I will move this one over here to the screen so you can see. So Kat, can you confirm that you see the Excel? Yep. All right. So now let's look at what I prepared here, okay? So this is the one that um, I want to, um, I want to, there's basically three examples right in here. So let me go to 2021 first. I want to do the 2021 and then have you understand what we are doing here. So notice that the sample company first quarter of 2021 and first quarter of 2021 and maximum 10K quarterly, okay? 10K is the gross pay. So let's take a look at my employee. So I have the number of employees here and I have their quarterly wages, folks, quarterly wages, okay? And then I have this quarterly health insurance. So I came up with quarterly wages, quarterly qualified wages, okay? It is this number plus this number, I get that. And in 2021, folks, 70% of qualifying wages so I simply use this number times 75%. I got this number, okay? So my first quarter, and oh, I qualify because my gross sales was 20% down from the first quarter of 2019, okay? So I qualify. So I'm going to apply for ERC refundable tax credit. So I'm calculating. So 70% of that is 3,000, 2,000, 400, 3,000, so I go down. Come down to here, if I do 70% of my quarterly, I actually got a bigger number than 7,000, so I limit myself on the 7,000. Then I limit myself again on this payroll to 7,000, so I came up with 36,748.204. So this is the total refundable tax credit I have for my first quarter, which I qualified, okay? Let's see, the second quarter. Second quarter comes around, pandemic got even worse, and my state governor issued executive order, we're shutting down for five days. But because of the shutdown, it made my second quarter qualify, right? So I don't have to care about the gross sales now, and I can use the other qualifier to get myself here. So. And the same thing, this is my quarterly pay. Okay, look, I have the same quarterly pay or maybe it's a little different, but again, I do 70%. So I got here, I limited myself to 7,000, limited myself to 7,000. So this quarter I got 43,000. 
So this is 2021, story of 2021, and we are done. And you don't have any more ERC because the third quarter, fourth quarter is not announced. It is not there. And Biden, President Biden promised, made a promise to American that we will all get vaccinated, um, you know, before, did he say August or was summer? I forgot what we, whether he used a month or he used the summer in general, but it's, it's some, sometimes when it's hot. So that is 2021. I just want you to see my calculation so you understand the, the details I was talking about earlier. Let's look at 2020. So on 2020, and in the first one, this is the first quarter I'm doing, okay? And the first quarter, and I only have, a, I calculated for retention credit for the shutdown period because the first quarter, remember the January, February, and the March, uh, only March had a shutdown. The January, February was normal, right? So only March has a shutdown. So I calculated just the shutdown period where I had my quarter, I had my shutdown uh, period gross pay made a qualified wages. So I got the 50% qualified wages. Remember, it is 50% in the first quarter. I mean, in 2020. So I got that. And because it is the March 12th start to effect, so I prorated that over. So this would be my first quarter claim because that the, the law started on March 12th before it doesn't count. All right. So I got my 13,000. But remember, I can have maximum 5,000 in the year, right? So everybody, I can have 5,000 if I qualify. So I'm going down the rope to see which quarter is still qualified because as long as I don't reach 5,000 for each of these employees, if I have a qualifying quarter, I keep on bringing it in because I'm going to get to the 5,000 eventually. So now the fourth quarter, second quarter, third quarter, I had a PPP money, so I cannot use it. Only fourth quarter I could. So I came to the fourth quarter. That's a fourth quarter quarterly pay. And then 15%. So I got that. But my, remember, I already claimed a little bit in the first quarter. So I'm adding it up right here. And this one got over 5,000. So I eliminate to be 5,000. This one got over 5,000. So I eliminate it to be 5,000. So you see, so I actually can claim 2977.10 again, because I did not reach the 5,000 per employee cap. And because that's a whole year. Make sense, right? So with that, I think I really kind of touched on some really important differences between the cat and the tiger, okay? So the 2021 is the tiger, 2020 is the cat. And we want to make sure that you understand the difference. So when you do amendment and you know how to do 2020, but folks, for 2021, you should not do amendment. You should file it right for the first two quarters, okay? So that kind of give us, um, give us, the, uh, give us the, the talk on the ERC, ERC credit. So now let's go to our other subject related to PPP2. And you, uh, let me uh, get my, Slides going again, again, going again. So how are you guys doing out there? You okay? You're hanging on, right? And uh, I am getting myself ready for you here. Uh, but I need to share my uh, screen. Why don't you allow me share my screen? Yes, I am here. All right, I'm sharing. Okay, and Let's push out our, all right, PPP2. <laughs> you know, there is a, you know, this really funny, okay? And I have client who doesn't, who are not good with English, so they speak 
Chinese to me. So they were writing me a Chinese uh, text to ask me about PVP2. And the P, they translate that into Chinese is the word of fart. So they go like fart, 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 number two. <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I, was looking, I was looking at the email trying to not laugh, but this is PVP2, okay? So I think you'll enjoy that. So I, I, I literally think it was so creative. Why do they do that, right? And making me laugh so hard. Okay, how can I determine if my business is eligible for PV2 or not? Okay, of course it is very important. You better be able to determine that. So in the nutshell, and the government want you to calculate that really simply. They don't want to know your profit. They don't care about your profit because you might be a bad manager, whatever money you make, you blow it up, okay? So they just want to know the gross sales. Gross sales are literally equals to the bank deposit that you put money in the bank, in your business account. So gross receipt is to include all revenue in whatever form received or accrued. Did you hear that accrued? And if, you, if your accounting method is cash, you go by your bank. That's okay. But if your accounting method is accrued, come on, you cannot just go by your bank. If let's say, let's say you are accrued and um, we are looking at the first, uh, we're looking at the third quarter of 2020 and you are accrued. So um, at the end of September and you're supposed to receive a $100,000 big payment to come in. And so you will accrue that into your September. So that might make you not lose so much money. So you may not qualify for the 25% drop because you need to accrue your income over, okay? But of course you say, well, but I also accrue my expense. It doesn't matter. And we're just talking about income. So if you are accrued in 2019, you better be the same in 2020. But if your tax return, you always filed on cash, then I don't see why you just go by cash. That's easier, right? So make sure you count all your income that you received and if your cash method, if you are accruing method, and then you need to, to count on all the money that you are about to receive in the next 30 days, okay? So that way, that's how you calculate your gross receipt, okay? And of course, it says that you must have fewer than 300 employees most of my clients, I'm trying to think, maybe just a handful of them has more than 300 employees. Majority of our 10,000 clients have less than 300 employees. So I'm not worried about you don't qualify for that. And you will use the PPP. You will be, you, you before you apply for PPP2, you need to be finishing your PPP1. And if you got PPP1 and you don't even, you can't even get forgiven and you didn't even finish using it, then forget about PPP2. You still have government money to spend, right? So make sure you spent your PPP1 and you already put in the forgiveness application. And every business qualifies for PPP2, even sole proprietor, LLC, and anything, everything, okay, folks? So make sure as long as you're in business and you qualify, and of course, for PPP one, the, um, the 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 maximum PPP money you can get is ten million. But on PPP two, they they lowered it to two million. Okay, so that's the qualification. And how much can I get from PPP two? How do I do the calculation? This is a this is a a question that we can spend today in here. So let's just catch the spirit of it. So there's two ways to calculate a monthly, average monthly payroll, right? Monthly payroll average, you know how to calculate that. You can use, for PVP calculation, you can use 2019 number. You can also use 2020 number, but you don't have to use 2020 number if it is lower. And um, choose one is higher with a monthly average, monthly payroll. Okay, then that monthly payroll, there's two rate to apply them 2.5 times or 3.5 times. In what case people get 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3.5, 3
they are the one with NIC code start with 72, which is hotel, um, a bed and breakfast, um, restaurant. Okay, so those are the ones you can do 3.5. And if you, if you are other business like hair salon, nail salon, and uh, professional service, legal firm, law firm, people like that, 2.5. So that is where you will do your calculation. You want to come up with your average monthly payroll and then you times that. So I know there's a lot of questions about average monthly payroll. So what's in there, what, how to include. When you apply for it, you always, obviously you work with a lender, right? And I'll tell you the truth. And nobody really, you know, admit who is right, who is wrong. Every lender is different. Some lenders, they make you add up weird numbers. Some lenders, they, they make you not able to get more amount for the average monthly. But whoever the lender is, you go by their definition. For example, I have one lender allow you to add state taxes in there. Then I have another lender do not allow you to add state taxes in the monthly average payroll. So um, of course, I wish you go with the lender who allow you to add that in because the number is bigger. But generally speaking, you have a lender, you go by their definition of what can be included in there because there's just a lot of interpretations. I, you know, even if I tell you, this is my understanding, but if you go to that lender, they go, no, we don't believe what Ying says, then what are you going to do? So you still have to go by theirs, right? So we don't want to waste time to talk about what the lender is going to do. And I just want to say to you that when you calculate monthly payroll, just call the lender and or find out from their website how they want you to calculate. You calculate it that way. Okay, so that would be a good advice for you. Don't try to reinvent the wheels. And of course, if you do one with the lender and it didn't go through or you don't like it, the other lender, you calculated the number is bigger, go with the bigger one, right? And um, every lender has their own ways to understand how to calculate the gross weight, uh, the, the monthly, average monthly payroll cost. All right, so what are the forgivable costs for the loan? So simple, payroll. 60% has to be in payroll. The other 40% got expended a lot for PPP2. And one, one thing that I really take a note, it is the, uh, they even cover facility changes that's related to COVID-19. So for example, you know, our firm, we actually did a facility changes for, uh, because of COVID. You know how we have clients always need to come to our locations to pick up their payroll, right? So they are just not the people like to do electronic anything, so they come. And those clients, we really don't want to have them come into the office. Who knows, maybe they're infected by COVID and I, our staff, safety is really a concern. So we actually set up a pickup box outside. So what we did is we actually designed the pickup box. So one client calling to pick up the payroll, we give them a code. They come in, they put in the code at the outside of the door. Then one of the mailbox door will pop open. So based on your code, you will get your own payroll paper. So those are the you know changes we made. Those are sixty thousand dollar kind of renovations. And if I have PPP dollars, that will pay for that. So that's what um, you know. That's one of the things that I want to mention, which got expended a big time in this second PVP, but the first PVP do not have that. They only allow you to do rent, utility, remember, uh, mortgage interest, stuff like that. So there is more uh, ways to spend. They also, the second one also allow you to buy supplies. And for restaurant means your cost of goods sold. Okay, folks? So they did expand and you should, you know, not to worry about, not to worry about how you spend it for right now, just, um, worry about to qualify and to get applied, right? And by the way, in my earlier um, webinar, and I was really scared of this money gonna evaporate like nothing, just like how we experienced the first time. So I told my folks that, you know, it's really urgent, do it right away. 
And let me tell you that there's still money left and as things are going slow and don't get high blood pressure over this. And if you haven't really applied and you just couldn't get in with anybody, you always have community CPA, okay? And we, of course, are the place where people seek for help. And you also have your connected uh, communities that you can go for help there. And we have time. There's still money left, so you don't need to be so uh, stressed. Hey, folks, don't be so stressed. So this is the forgivable cost list. And I covered a lot of it. And of course, you're going to use it for, um, for the wages. The required is 60% on wages, 40% on something else. That something else could be property damage cost, could be uh, moderation modification expenditures, including PVP equipment, stuff like that, cover operating expenditures, such as buying for payment and service deliveries, things like that and eligible for uh, full loan forgiveness and 60% uh, on wages, 40% on something else. So you'll be fine. You will be forgiven. You know, it should not be an issue. How do I do a PVP application as sole proprietor? And this is something that I want to talk to you about. And I am going to um, stop sharing on this one because I want to talk to you too kind of people. One is the uh, sole proprietor. And then the other one uh, I want to talk to you is the, is the um, um, partnership partners and how to, how to apply for that. So very simply, I'm going into, um, I'm going into the website. I am going to pull up the schedule C which is the schedule that you use for sole proprietorship filing, right? Remember Schedule C? And with Schedule C, I want to walk the Schedule C with you because I want you to know and how, what you need to use to fill up that, to, to apply for PVP. So now I'm going to share the screen with you on the Schedule C, okay? So C, no secret, right? This is the um, this is the the form that uh, we know. I'm trying to make it bigger. I didn't know how. How do I make it bigger? Yeah. Okay. So Schedule C is part of the 1040. Remember, when you have a sole proprietorship, you actually sometimes you have EIN number right here. Sometimes you don't. So if we have a business. Uh, the name, so you could be, you know, let's say this is my 1040, so I must have my name here. I, I'm just going to fill this out with you. And then, you know, I must have my social security number, right? So I'm not real. I'm just making it up. And the business, I'm going to say I have a mowing company, mowing uh, and snowing, uh, remove, snow removal. Okay, so I don't have a EIN number. I just use my social security number and I am on cash method, okay? The reason I say I'm on cash method is because whatever I receive is what I made. I don't want to count my, on my client who said that she's going to pay me and she never really come through. I may see her payment in 2022, right? So I don't want to count that. I just want to count on what I got. So I made for for 2020, for the whole year, I ended up making 100, uh, let's say 70, I say 75,000. But in in year before, this is 2020, okay? Year before I made 100,000. So suddenly I qualify because I'm 25% of drop, right? I qualify for PVP now. And now I know that I, I make this, but my car expenses and all that, that's 5,000. And I really don't have any other cost, really, you know? So my profit at the end of the year is 70,000. So this is my Schedule C. And I know that 70,000 is literally my payroll. In Schedule C, in Schedule C format, your line 31 is your payroll. So I have a 70,000 payroll. My 70,000 payroll, I divided that by 12. 
So what? My average monthly payroll is 5833. But hey, don't forget, I also have 401k. So I actually um I actually put in 19,500 on 401k that I, you know, that I uh, actually put in. Oh no, pension down next line. And remember when you put in any number here, this 70,000 changes, right? So your 70,000, 19,500, so it's only five, five zero five zero zero. And when you calculate your self-employment, the average monthly payroll for Schedule C, you need to add that $19,500 back into your total. So you go back to 70,000 again. So your monthly average payroll is 5,000. So my monthly average payroll is 50,500 um, 50, plus 19,500 divided by 12. So 5,833. And I am a long mowing company by no stretch. I'm not a restaurant, I'm not a hotel, I'm not bed and breakfast and I'm not Airbnb. So I time myself 2.5, 2.5. So five um, ah, divided by 12 is 5833.3334 times 2.5. So I would request, I would fill up a PPP2 application for $14,583.33. That is my number, okay? So this is where I want to tell you that as a sole proprietor, that is what you need to calculate, okay? Um, so that is so much about sole proprietor. So let's look at another one. So I will stop sharing. And what I will want to look at is the 1065 K1, okay? So I am getting 1065 K1, and I want to know that how do I um, apply? How do I apply for PVP2? So this is what I will show you how to do that. Um, K1, I am on the internet looking for K1, 1065. Okay, so I will share my screen again with you so you know what I am talking about. So now, first of all, not all the 1065 K1 eligible for PVP2. There's two types of K1 people could get. One K1 is you working in the 1065 environment. You are the one that working. You're getting paid as self-employment. The other one person who gets K-1, but could very well be an investor, passive investor. So they don't get a number on the self-employment column right here. So right here, look, 14, box 14, self-employment earning. You need to have, if we calculate the same kind of PVP, I would have to have 70,000 right here, okay? so. You may be 70,000, maybe this one on the ordinary business income, like your share of K1, maybe is 45,000. And but maybe your guaranteed payment for service is 25,000. That would give you the 70,000. Okay, so just make sure, just make sure that you have this one reflected on here. And the guaranteed payment is always a self-employment payment. Actually, I think the form would come in like that. So only this one, they classify whether it's self-employed or not. So they give that and the guaranteed payment is always self-employment income, unless they put a number over here is for capital. This is for service. Okay, folks, so you need to identify your K1. Maybe you have all of these, but you don't have this. That means this 45,000 cannot be calculated into PVP2, only the 25,000. So if this is the case, 
what's going to happen is you use 25,000 divided by 12. So that gives you $2,083. And you times 2.5. Of course, you times 2.5 is $5,208. That's your PV2. But if you are a restaurant owner getting the K1, then you times 3.5. Okay. So that is where the 1065 comes in. And I just want to point out, and you're probably going to say that, what about my other K1, 1120 SK1? I'm sorry, 1120 SK1 cannot apply for PV2 because it is not self-employed. And then let me just uh, give you, uh, let me just find that 1120S and show you what I mean by that. Okay, so let's go there. And then we look at the 1120S for uh, K1. This is K1, but you see it has this thing on there. It's 1120S, okay? And you notice that there is nothing in here talk about self-employment, okay? So the box 14 is nothing. It's a foreign transaction. It's not related to this. So any number shows up here. Like if you have a $45,000 here, is useless. You cannot use that to apply for PVP2. So this is where I want you to be aware of PV2 uh, calculation for sole, sole proprietor is based on Schedule C. And for um, the for the partnership, you look for box 14 and a guaranteed payment. And for 1120S, you don't have a choice. Okay. So the only thing you would get from 1120S it probably be your uh, W two that paid by the uh, by the S corporation, but you know that W two if you receive a W two, you're an employee, so the PV two it doesn't even apply to you. On um, PV two only apply to the company, so your S corporation should apply for PVP two, and you um you won't apply it based on your individual. Okay, so someone also asked me, oh, you know, I have a a nonprofit organization, but everybody got paid for 1099. And can I apply for PV2? The answer is the nonprofit organization itself cannot because you have no employee. And but the 1099 recipients, each one of them can. So make sure if you end up in that situation, you apply for PV2, that your your 1099 people can apply for PV2. Okay. So now I come back to, uh, we have just 10 minutes left and we, we maybe have a couple of questions. So I want to address that. Let's just go for it, okay? Um, so this first question. So if I do not have a reduction of 25% in 2020 compared to 20, 2019 in any quarter, can I still apply for PV, PVP as a loan? Answer is no. You cannot apply for PVP2 because PVP2 become a loan that you later on pay it back. It is not the purpose. The purpose is for you to get help for PVP2. And when you have a reduction, so you get that. And if you happen to not, if you happen to lay off all your employee and you don't have that 60% of payment to the payroll, and then your loan become your your, your loan become non forgivable so it's become a loan so but you cannot start by saying that well I just want it to be loan so you know I even though I don't qualify for 25 percent I still want to apply no that doesn't work my dear and uh, really exam uh, make sure that you know I I'm actually pleasantly pleasantly discovered that a lot of our clients a lot of our clients actually do not qualify for PV2 because even though pandemics is the way it is, but they got really good sales. I mean, um, you know, second quarter is such a dark time. I, I am thinking nobody would make it on second quarter, but no, there are people making it, it's just normal. So I am really impressed, just very impressed. Those business owner who actually made it even for every quarter of 2020, they're genius. Yeah, I really admire them. So um, then uh, the other question, I didn't quite understand. 
can you add to question and answers? So I don't know whether I still have questions. I couldn't really see them. So maybe not. Then we will conclude today's webinar. And I hope you learned some. And you know, we have this um, uh, YouTube channel, folks. And I really want you to help me to make more people aware of our YouTube channel and come to subscribe our channel. And we really do, we, we invested a lot of our time in making the YouTube available to everybody. Our only purpose is to elevating the knowledge level in our community. You know, knowledge is power. If you don't have the knowledge, you miss out. You don't even know. We have, I have a business owner who doesn't really speak a lot of English. And, um, uh, you know, I happen to talk to, to them. They don't even know anything about the PPP. You know, that interesting Chinese character of the PPP. <laughs> they didn't even know that part existed. So, uh, but I, I just don't want that to happen to anybody. So I want you to be a good uh, warrior for the community members and for your community. And if they don't know something, refer them to our channel and have them subscribe to our channel. So every time we have new things come up and they can come in, this channel has Spanish, Vietnamese and Chinese, uh, three other languages. And I hope you do good business, even though we're in pandemic, and I um, wish you a good success and a supporting community CPA. Become our client. I'll talk to you again. Bye-bye.